Welcome back to What Are T Noobs? This is a GW E100, the Tier 10 German SPG. It's located on the southwest spawn of Live Oaks, and this one is under the command of Randy XX Treble 7 of the War Clan. And it's been a while since we've seen him, but he's still got two marks of excellence on the barrel. Let's go. Off we go! Well, 21 centimeter howitzer, so it's actually got a very big punch. 900 alpha, 53 millimeter pin, 11.4 meters on the burst radius, between 12 and a half and 31 seconds of stun. It's the RT that never was, because of course they never had any plans to actually make any GW E900, so it's a fake RT, but that uh, color scheme is very well known to us. Okay, he's gone straight to the aim and he's going straight for the tree, the spotting tree. There's nearly always somebody goes up there straight away, but it's nearly always somebody who goes out there. And we just spotted the tracer coming from the enemy RT. And for a second there, I thought that uh, he'd actually hit something because the shell disappeared without an explosion. But we've seen the tracer from both enemy RTs. We know where they are. They're in the yard at the back of the railway station in the northeast corner of the map. Now we're looking around for a likely target. The T-54E1 just behind those block of houses. The E4 on the enemy team managed to make a quick run. And now we're looking at the Fosch 155. It was a quick dial-in, but he got a direct hit for 264. I did say that somebody normally goes to that spotting bush and... Yeah, in this occasion, it was a Fosh 155. Okay, the object 260 is being KG, whereas the AMX M451 poked his nose out too far, and he got hit. Okay, we're looking over the railway line. We found at the dip. They've got a T62A. He's managed to make it down so fast. It's a tier 10 game with tier 9 tanks in it. That shot was a bit short. But I think the T-62A managed to pull back fairly quickly. Okay, so they've got a Cobra hanging at the back. And the Cobra just took a big hit from the Caro. It's good that our team have actually managed to capture the dip, though. That actually puts pressure on the enemy team. If they capture the dip, then it puts pressure on ours. T-62 gone ball steep and now he's really in trouble and he's going to go down. In fact, he has been killed. The Skoda got him in the end. Skoda T-50. Yeah, never go full retard and dive in because uh, you are likely to come a cropper. But look at that. Our VK 4502B's five hit points and that T-54E1 will have him for lunch and does... We're loaded, but can we get a shot in this uh, T-54? Rounds out. No, it falls too short, but it does stun the T-54, but that doesn't stop him taking out the Type 5 Heavy. And then the Yag Tiger sets the E4, E1 rather on uh, fire, and so he claims a kill, even though he's down to 12 hit points. So it's not looking so good for our team up that corner of the map, because... They've either been wiped out or they've got very few hit points, but the T-30 dawdles for too long and Logic 2685 shuts him down. So it's um, knock for knock at the moment in that corner of the map. And now we can see the AMX M451. Now he's being very sly because he's actually pulled in behind those houses where he knows he's got cover. But this Progetto 66, he's not being so careful. And rouse out. That stuns him. And he gets hit by the other RT as well. There's two RTs in this game. The other one being the FV3805. The RTs on the enemy team are an Object 261 and M53, M55. We know they're both in the railway yard because the tracers were coming from there. It was as plain as you, uh, you could see. Okay, well... The M451 pulled back. We didn't shoot because he's actually going for the E4 instead. And the E4 is trying to use the wreck for cover. And that's the worst thing you can do with this RT. Because the RT can go over the top of the wreck. 
uh, the shells don't fly straight. They come parabolically. Well, as uh, ballistically, I should say, not parabolically. And yes, he suffered some damage. Standard reload on this RT, 37.39 seconds. But you can see here that Randy's got it down to 28.85. And that's fast for a 21 centimeter howitzer. The other RTs that hold the 21 centimeter, of course, are being the GW Tiger P, which has a long reload. And of course, the GW Tiger, which has slightly better. And that 268, well, he's facing two guys at the same time, but he's get, certainly getting a lot of support from Marty. And that's what I like to see, because then he knows that somebody's got his back. In fact, he's not the only one, because there's a Yuda 16 and a Strip 103B backing him up. So if those guys come forward or try to make a pass at the Object 2685, they're going to come a cropper. In fact, there's the... Uh, Strip 103B putting a shell into the AMX M451 suddenly dropped a lot of hit points. And now he's a splash kill, so we can go after him. Well, not a splash kill as such, but it was a good shot. There's the 268 claiming the kill, and we picked up the track damage because we tracked him with our first shot. And I think the stun assist actually went to our teammate because he got the second shot. Okay, the Progetto thinks he's in with it. And he's taken a massive hit from the 2685. And he's gone down. So we're now three ahead of the enemy. We're looking at an AMX M451. We're fully dialed in. Rounds out. Side on. Can we get a hit? No. Nope. Hit the water instead. RNG said no. Okay, looking back into the town, the E4 is still there. He certainly learned his lesson about sitting behind wrecks because, of course, it doesn't help you if you do that. But if you sit behind a building, it certainly can help you to a certain extent. <laughs> that guy just felt the wrath of the Object 268 version 5. Okay, we're rolling. We're using our W key. And Steve Fall said today, or not today, but it was actually sometime in the past, he said the most dangerous person is an RT who knows where his W key is. Um, I'm not sure if he said it in that particular terms, but I know what he meant. He, he actually meant that any RT player who knows where, how to move and how to relocate can be very, very deadly to the enemy. There's only three enemies remaining. They lost their arty. We didn't see that happen, but they did lose them. And they've got a Progetto 65, the FB4005, the Heshbon, and a Gonkavisa. There's the Progetto. Now we can splash him, but he decides not to do that. He wants the Heshbon. And yes, he should actually, because there's a good chance he might get a pen. But the shell falls short. Oh, well, that guy really didn't stand much of a chance. Now, we think the Progetto is behind that building, but he's not spotted. Well, he can't be very far from there because the Object 268 version 5 is not that far away. And if he is still there... Well, if he's moved, the 268 would see him. So everybody is now driving towards the city. And I'm expecting one of them to spot him very shortly. And in fact, the first one is the Gonkavitsa. He takes a big hit. Oh! And we managed to get a shell in there, but it only stunned him for a short period of time. That's the second RT. The FB3805 uh, managed to get a second stun on him he must have used his first aid kit straight away or have one of those things which actually initiated it right away so the goncavitz goes going down but now we've got the progetto 65 as the last one and he just managed to kill our caro 45 rounds out oh that's a good stun 
We lost sight of him, but he's still got stun. Oh, he got rid of it. He got rid of it. So we're not really going to get any benefit from this one. The FB3805 tries, but the 50 TP does the honors. And that's the end of the game. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first class tank for Randy XX777 of the War Clan in the GWE 100. He managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits in that game. He managed to get nine. And he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in his team. In fact, he didn't get a single kill, but that meant that every tank that he actually attacked and got stunned or did some damage to counted towards his confederate medal. His win rate was very low indeed, 917, which suggests that most of his damage was actually assist in this game. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, we can see the highest damage he did was 1,191 hit points. But the highest damage in the game was the 268 version 5. He picked up a high caliber for 6,015 hit points, followed by the Skoda T50, who got 4,540. And he picked up a Leather Slaves medal. And the third highest damage, well, that goes to the Object 260 on the enemy team, got 4,000 hit points of damage dead. When it came to kills, the highest number was the 268 version 5 with 4 and the Skoda T50, both got the same. Three kills went to the FV3805 on our team and also to the Gonkavisa. And two kills went to the 50TP, uh, their E4 and their Progetto 65. And we can see that, yes, Randy didn't get any kills at all. Um, so unfortunately, no, he's way down there at the bottom. But when it came to base XP, you can see it's a lot higher near the top because the Skoda T50 managed 1,175, the Optic 2685 got 1,113, and the Caro 45T managed 1,015, and they were the only three tanks who managed to make it over 1,000 base, with the 3805 getting 971, so both Arties were the next highest after that, fourth and fifth position on base XP, with Randy getting 903. He fired 14 rounds, but he got two direct hits on the enemy and no penetration. So a lot of his shells went astray in that game. 12 splashes, 1,191 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but he got 477 of damage assist where he tracked one of the enemy tanks and 3,830 stun assist off 12 stuns. So yes, I was right. It is stun damage that he was doing and assistance. And that's why he managed to get the good results. Well, he picked up 32,964 credits from that game, even on a free-to-play account, and that was down to a mission completion of 40,000. Otherwise, he would have actually made a loss over the game. Five bonds for it being tier 10, and 903 base XP from it as well. So, a reasonable game, but most of it by stun assist, and lucky for him that he got a mission completion, otherwise he would have made a loss. Hope you enjoyed that brief battle. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.